Greetings everyone, this is a response to the Red Dice Diaries about uh, role-playing the Embrace in Vampire the Requiem and presumably Vampire the Masquerade as well. Uh, it's something that, if you've played multiple games of Vampire, it's an event that happens to every character, so it can kind of become this detail that you kind of want to gloss over, because it's like, I, I just want to get to the part where I'm playing my Vampire. Um, but it's an important part of the character, and I think there are ways to make it fresh. Uh, the most important thing, I think, is if you really want to make this have some weight to it, uh, it takes longer, but you should have your characters, their pre preludes should be one or two full sessions uh, where they are a mortal. And there are two ways in which people are brought into um, vampiric society in these games. The first is that they are selected and kind of groomed by their sire, and eventually they're kind of in the know about the situation. They know somewhat what's going to happen, that they're going to be granted immortality and all this power. Um, and the second way is that they don't know their sire at all, uh, that they, uh, you know, are just, it's a almost a random act of, of murder um, and, and uh, resurrection. And I think it's really important if you go either route with that uh, to have your player just create a full standard mortal character. Have them focus on their mortal life, not what they want to do or be as a vampire. Yes, of course, like, ask them beforehand which clan they want to be in. Give them that choice um, so they, they have that control over it. But don't ask them to make a vampire character. Have them just create a World of Darkness character um, so they focus on who the person is as a human being as opposed to being uh, one of the kindred. And you can roleplay the session either uh, as a seduction uh, and or the reward of, you know, be, having been a ghoul for a long time uh, and having this be the kind of the pinnacle of the session, or you can play it out as uh, strictly horror and being hunted and uh, and brutally murdered by, <laughs> by your would-be sire. Um, and what's important, and this is... Uh, this is a touchy subject with people, but bear with me for a minute. Uh, I look at the embrace really as a metaphor for rape. Uh, vampirism itself is a, is a sexual metaphor. I mean, it's it's obvious uh, there is a you know a penetration of the skin. There's an exchange of bodily fluids. It's a sexual metaphor, uh, and the embrace itself, to me, uh, is a lie, and. If the character is in the know, if they have been kind of groomed and are going to uh, have been selected and told what is going to happen to them, uh, whatever they think is going to happen with the embrace, the moment it happens, it needs to be clear that it's been a lie the whole time. They are being uh, violated and taken to a place that they were not uh, not prepared to go and not willing to go. Uh, and it's really, I think, focusing on uh, what the feeling of death is like and uh the the you know the kind of their shrinking tunnel vision their heartbeat uh you know slowing down and all of their respiration stopping until you know they they are dead but their brain is still uh, has that little bit of oxygen uh, to it so they're still just slightly aware of what's happening until those sticky disgusting drops of vitae make their way into their mouth and at that moment, their their organs within them begin to to wither and die. They can feel something happen to their the core of their soul. Their being is ripped out of them. They feel the awakening of this beast. And I think that, however the embrace happens, whether it's willing or unwilling, it needs to end in a frenzy. Their first frenzy, uh, whether it's from uh, the starvation of having being uh, drained anger at the violation, the aggression that has just been committed against them, or even uh, fear at the experience, fear of learning what their sire, like what that promise really, really meant. Uh, it needs to end in a, uh, in, a, in a violent and horrifying frenzy. Um, because this act is, it is a physical, sexual act, psychosexual act of, of, of rape that it, it's, it's a rape to their soul. Uh, basically, um, that that is what it is, uh, and you can. I think it carries a lot of weight. Uh, role playing the lie of it, 
uh, when they've been promised something different. Um, and a little bit of that, I mean, the same kind of experience can be transferred over to if they've been uh, unwillingly embraced. Now, the uh, I'm getting a lot of this these ideas from one of my favorite source books, which I sadly no longer have, which was the Vampire the Requiem uh, Chronicler's Guide. It was one of, I think, the best vampire supplements that uh, White Wolf released. It was just awesome. Um, but they they had that section. They also had suggestions for the night or two after their embrace, uh, taking control away from them on how their powers work. You know, them getting kind of getting used to their bodies. If someone pushes them and they and they push the the, the character back, you know, having them automatically without their control burn a point of vitae and get a boost to their strength. You know, activate their vigor and have them seriously injure someone, throwing them against a wall, you know, breaking their bones or possibly even killing them. Uh, if they're if they're wounded, um, you know, they have they have all sorts of gashes or cuts over them, uh, and it would be like a masquerade breach uh, to heal themselves in front of someone. It doesn't matter. They they instinctually the beast burns that point of vitae for them, and their wounds begin to to their horror and shock. They've never experienced this themselves. Start stitching themselves back together. Gashes and wounds uh, disappear. Um, activate their disciplines when they're not expecting to use them. Uh, really contrast the the fragility and weakness that they had as a human with the the kind of predatory strength that, that they have uh, as a vampire. Uh, and the other thing is, um, like I said, give them a choice of clan, but don't give them a choice of what their, of what or who their sire is like. Uh, you get to be in control of their sire, and that's a scary thing, especially if they knew their sire beforehand, uh, learning just how two-faced vampires are uh, can be a very powerful experience for them, um, and, sad and how sadistic they can be. Um, and how sick they can be. Another another great source book uh, was the book on ghouls in Requiem, and the the opening fiction to that book uh, is like really kind of hard to read and gross and and really horrifying. And I think you can kind of translate a lot of that atmosphere if you've read that story uh, to what your sire is like post embrace, what the insight that you gain now that you have this animal uh, within you. Um, and you can really fuck with with your players if you uh, if they uh, were ripped if they were you know ripped out of their mortal life against their will against without their knowledge you know if if their sire committed a, a random act of uh, the embrace, um, really uh, making their sire a bastard or scary <laughs> or just an unknown element someone who's watching them even when after they've been embraced but not helping them. Uh, but but interfering with them, I think that there's a lot of horror that can be there. But really, the most important thing is to have them focus on creating a human, on creating a person, not on creating a vampire, on creating a person, and then rip that away from them and bring them into the world of the damned. Uh, so that's my advice on how to make the embrace interesting and how to, how to have the embrace carry weight in the game.